Hello and welcome to AWS Initiate Online. My name's James Carney. I'm the CTO here at Mobilize Cloud. And along with my colleague, Gareth Davis, who will be joining us shortly, I'm going to talk to you today about becoming a cloud native and building your own cloud center of excellence. Here's today's agenda. So I'm going to give you a little introduction to Mobilize Cloud. Um, take you through some of the benefits of um, becoming a cloud native and building your own cloud center of excellence or CCOE, um, where you should start. And then Gareth's gonna give you some practical steps on how to start building out your CCOE cloud center of excellence. And then we're gonna finish off with a little summary. So uh, Mobilize Cloud are AWS advanced consulting partners. Um, we're, as a the headline says they're cloud cloud native experts. And what that means is we help a lot of our customers um, uh, with application modernization and transformation uh, so they can get the very best out of their public cloud infrastructure. Um, we've helped many organizations sort of build out this kind of internal CCOE function uh, within their business, uh, <clears throat> one of which is the DVLA. So at the end of the slide deck, uh, we'll leave a link to a case study where you can read um, some more details about how the uh, how the DVLA transformed their application um, deployment uh, from legacy to cloud native. Um, quick buzzword check, um, just so we're all clear on what cloud native means and what is meant by a CCOE, a cloud center of excellence. So according to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, um, um, their uh, definition of cloud native is uh, cloud native technologies empower organizations to build and run scalable applications in modern dynamic environments. Combined with robust automation, they allow engineers to make high impact changes frequently and predictable, predictably with minimal toil. So in essence, what that means um, is um, Cloud native technologies are microservices applications, which typically employ things like um, self healing and auto scaling that allow engineers to upgrade and uh, fix or work on um, small parts of the application stack, ideally without affecting the entire stack. So they're very modular and you can, um, they're very easy to maintain. A cloud center of excellence, according to Gartner, uh, is the best practice approach to drive cloud-enabled transformation. So a CCOE, cloud center of excellence, is the engine with inside your organization so you can build cloud-native applications. Simple. So what are the main benefits of adopting um, cloud-native uh, with your newly formed Cloud Center of Excellence. Why, why would you do it? Why would you invest that money in building out a function inside your business? Organizations do it for pretty much one reason, one reason alone, that's to increase agility and speed. So if you look at the DVLA, for example, um, the good work that they did effectively took them from a typical new service delivery in their, within their legacy IT stack 400 days or more um, to as little as 30 days, which is a massive, massive uh, change and a huge increase in agility. So where do you start in terms of sort of mapping out your cloud center of excellence? Well, effectively, you need the vision. Without the vision, you can't, you can't move. And you've got to realize that a cloud center of excellence does involve uh, it can be quite disruptive and, and might evolve as well as um, change the way IT service delivery happens. It may have other, uh, other impacts on, on business areas outside IT. For example, how you might procure services or, or, and also how you might um, sell your services onto your end customer. So we tend to break this down in terms of people, process and technology. So people, what people have you got? What training do they need in order for them to be cloud natives? What extra people might you need to get get in to bolster your organization, whether they be 
uh, external contractors or they'd be um, new hires. Processes, what processes do you need um, in order to have a very agile, um, fast moving IT delivery function? And um, what technology do you need? What tech stack do you need to adopt in order um, for you to be able to do that? So once you've got this label down, so you've got your vision, you've got your people, processes and technologies um, sort of detailed down at high level, What's the next practical step? First off, you wanna stabilize and standardize what's already in place. No doubt most organizations have done something in the cloud. Typically in government organizations, for example, we see projects which are kind of you know semi-autonomous. They go off, they do their own thing. And we see a spiral of standards and a spiral of technology stacks. So it's all about understanding what you've got, picking the best of breed, matching those to your final game and doing things like implementing tagging, so making sure you can tag resources, you know what's running and you know how much they cost. Um, security best practice, uh, implementing that and understanding the entire of your, of your cloud infrastructure as it stands and have a stable base to move forward. And now I'm gonna hand over to Gareth Davis, who's going to give you some more information about the extra practical steps um, to build your cloud center of excellence. Thanks, Jim. So the next step is prototyping. So this is where your engineers should begin using the cloud. Um, you know, they, the CCOE should look at starting to train and certify individuals, for example, in AWS solutions architect roles. So uh, at this stage, you could do things like migrate your disaster recovery solution to the cloud. Um, that's because it'll be a great opportunity for, for your engineers to learn. Uh, it's low hanging fruit and it won't impact um, your existing uh, live production uh, business. Um, the next step is migration. So this is really where your engineers will, will learn a lot about both the cloud and their existing workloads. You know, they'll have to become very familiar with cloud uh, processes and tooling as well as you know, their own workflows and applications. So it's during this step um, that you should really build out the processes within your CCOE um, to lay the foundation for, for the rest of your journey. So you might uh, begin by doing a, a TCO, a total cost ownership, to see how much um, it's going to cost to run your services in the cloud. Then you might pick some low hanging fruit, things like um, applications that aren't critical to your business or non-production workloads that you can migrate across. Once you've got that process nailed down, then you can begin you know, migrating the rest of your, your workloads across to the cloud. Now it's during this step that um, usually an AWS partner helps your organization out. This is to ensure that you know, you're, you're doing best practices in the cloud, your solutions are well architected, uh, and that everything's secure moving forward. You know, this is really important to train your engineers up um, so that they adopt Kind of those best principles and cloud principles moving forward because you know from here on in you know your your cloud presence is going to is going to grow substantially the next step is optimize so this is kind of um, once you have your workloads in the cloud it's about how can we um, enable them to to be more cost effective and reduce toil uh, on operations teams for example so you might want to look at doing things like moving from your databases that are managed on EC2 instances across to Amazon's RDS service, you know, that manages databases for you, things like automatic patching, upgrades, and, and automatic failover. And that will let your, your engineers within your CCOE, you know, focus on delivering new services and innovating rather than, you know, day-to-day -to -day toil of managing servers. Uh, the next step is transform. This is really where you start to take advantage of the cloud. So this is where your, your engineers will really need to understand how cloud um, practices and processes hang together. So you need to do things like take advantage of auto scaling, multi availability zones. Um, so all of these things which kind of come free with from the cloud, but you would need to almost re-architect some of your, your workloads and applications in order to take advantage of them. So things like, can you use stateless applications so that you can run them on spot instances, you know, which can save you up to 80% of your cloud running costs? Can you 
use containerized solutions on platforms like EKS and ECS to squeeze the most out of your EC2 um, instances. So that this step's really important and it's one that you probably see the most benefit from. Finally, education. So how can your CCOE ensure that your organization adopts best practice? Well, it, it kind of falls on them to make sure that information is disseminated across the business and that they are champion, um, championing best practices. So it's, it's on them to become the institutional knowledge for the organization on all things cloud and ensure that governance is adopted across um, the organization. So in summary, summary um, a CCOE kind of lets you take back control of your IT. So it brings um, your process and technologies back in house. It allows you to create a sustainable resource so that you always have that knowledge of your applications and how they run in house. And finally, it allows you to rapidly innovate and prototype at speed whilst having a good level of governance um, covering it all to ensure your services are secure. So that's a quick run through of how to build your CCOE, a cloud center of excellence. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you would like any more information, here are details. And finally, we also have a case study available on the Amazon website covering a little bit more than what we discussed today uh, at one of our customers, DLA. Thanks again.